Hello, third grade, and today we are going to finish up week 12 in your green grammar book by going over the Thursday section together. Number one, use the subordinating conjunction to combine the two sentences. Label the independent and dependent clauses of your sentence. She turns nine this year. She will get her own computer. And the subordinating conjunction they want us to use to combine the sentences is after. So here's how I envision it making the most sense. Let's start with actually that subordinating conjunction after and write, after she turns nine this year, comma, she will get her own computer. Now you can see the two clauses of our sentence. The first clause is after she turns nine this year. Now think, can that by itself be a complete sentence? After she turns nine this year. No, because we don't know what will happen with just that clause. So put a little arch and since it cannot stand alone, this is your dependent clause. Now the second clause is, she will get her own computer. Hopefully you can hear that that by itself could be a complete sentence. Therefore, that clause can stand alone and is independent, okay? So she will get her own computer is an independent clause of that sentence. Number two, identify if the sentence is simple, compound, or complex. Look at the first clause, the parade will be canceled. Could that be a complete sentence on its own? Do you think the parade will be canceled? Yes, it could. So that clause right there, I put a little U under it. And since it can stand alone, that's independent. Okay. The other part there though, is just unless it stops raining. Could you use that as a complete sentence unless it stops raining? Hopefully you're thinking, no, that does, that's a fragment. That is a dependent clause. And remember, when you have an independent mixed with a dependent clause, like number one and number two on this page, these sentences are both complex because it's a mix of independent and dependent. Okay, number three, my favorite. Use descriptive language to rewrite the sentence. They went inside the empty house. Not very exciting. I don't like how it starts with that pronoun they. Who's they? So when I went to edit this sentence, I made sure I changed that part. I wrote, the group of friends courageously explored the old abandoned house. Now, I added a lot to this particular sentence. You do not have to add all of that. You can just maybe add a few adjectives maybe to describe the house like old or abandoned. Um, you could say they nervously went inside if they're creeping in, or a haunted house maybe you were thinking. But anything that you can do to make that more descriptive will improve that sentence dramatically. Number four, find a word with a prefix or suffix that matches the definition in parentheses. I will take my time and not produce blank work. Ooh, without care. What's a word that means without care? Your teachers never like if you do this on any kind of assignment. We like you to use, um, you, we like you to be full of care or careful. But if you're without care, that's being care, do you know the suffix? Careless, right. Okay, so I will take my time and not produce careless work. That's the goal that all of us have for you. And finally, for to wrap up this week with number five, it wants us to use context clues to determine the meaning of the underlined word. This is a good vocabulary word for you to know. The irate customer could hardly contain her anger after being treated so poorly. Okay, can you envision this in your head? If someone is being described as irate, that means that person is very angry. 
Okay. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I will see you back next week to go over week 13.